This is part 101 of ASP.NET Core tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss creating a custom authorization requirement and a handler with an example. At the moment, I'm logged in with this username, prajim at prajimtech.com. Now let's navigate to the list users page and then edit this same user. Notice I'm able to change my own roles and claims. We don't want to allow this. So here is our authorization requirement. An admin user can manage other admin user roles and claims, but not their own claims and roles. To achieve this, we need to know the logged in user ID and the user ID of the admin being edited. If they are the same, we do not want to allow access. Now, if we take a look at the browser, notice the user ID of the admin being edited is passed in the URL as a query string parameter. We can create a custom policy using a func. We discuss the func delegate and require assertion method in detail in part 99 of this ASP.NET Core series. We cannot use func to satisfy our authorization requirement here because we need access to the query string parameter to retrieve the user ID of the admin being edited. Also, as our authorization requirements get complex, we may need other services via dependency injection. So in situations like this, we create custom requirements and handlers. If you recollect from our previous video in this series, an authorization policy may have one or more requirements and each requirement may have one or more handlers. To create a custom requirement, all we need to do is create a class and implement I authorization requirement interface. So let's do this now. We're going to place our custom requirements and handlers in a separate folder. So right click on the project name within the solution explorer, add new folder and let's name our folder security. To this folder, let's add a new class. This class is going to contain our custom requirement. I'm going to name this class manage admin roles and claims requirement. By looking at the name of this file, we can say this class is going to contain the requirement to be able to manage admin roles and claims. If you recollect, a custom requirement class must implement this built-in I authorization requirement interface. So let's make our class implement it. This is an empty marker interface, which means there is nothing in this interface our class must implement. At the moment, we have a red squiggly. That's because we are missing the required using declaration. Let's bring it in by pressing control period. To handle this custom requirement, we need a custom handler. And to create a custom handler, we create a class that inherit from the built-in authorization handler of T, where T is the type of requirement. So to the security folder, let's add another new class file. We're going to name this can edit only other admin roles and claims handler. This handler class must inherit from authorization handler of T, where T is the type of requirement. Our requirement is present in this class. So we have specified this class type as the argument for the generic parameter. We have a red squiggly. So let's bring in the required namespace. Next, we need to provide implementation for handle requirement async method of this base authorization handler class. So notice when I type override and then space, we see handle requirement async method. And when I select that, the method signature is automatically stubbed out. This method is receiving two input parameters, authorization handler context and the requirement that we are handling. And notice on this context object, we have resource property and the return type of this property is object, but we are casting it to authorization filter context. Now, if you're wondering what is this resource property is going to return? Well, we are using this custom requirement and handler to protect manage user roles action and manage user claims action within the administration controller. So the resource property on the context object is going to return those action methods that we are protecting as authorization filter context. If the authorization filter context is null, then we cannot proceed with the authorization check. So we are returning completed task and deny access. 
at the moment we have a red squiggly so let's bring in the required namespace next we need the logged in admin id Notice, to retrieve the logged in admin ID, we are again using this incoming authorization handler context object. On that object, we have the list of user claims. From the list of those claims, we are interested in the name identifier claim because that contains the ID of the logged in user. Next, we want the ID of the admin being edited. It is passed in the URL as a query string parameter and to retrieve this query string parameter value we are using this authorization filter context object through this object we have access to http context route data query string parameters and everything else provided by mvc and razor pages after we have successfully retrieved the logged in admin id and the admin id being edited we check if the logged in user is in the admin role and if he has edit role claim type with a claim value of true and if the logged in admin id is not equal to admin id being edited so if this expression returns true then we have successfully evaluated the requirement and to indicate that on the context object we call succeed method passing it the requirement that we are handling if this expression returns false then our requirement is not met so we return completed task and the access is not authorized next we need to register this custom authorization handler we do that in the configure services method of the startup class we already have edit role policy here first let's modify this we want to create a policy with our custom requirement so on the policy object we call add requirements method and to this method we pass an instance of our custom requirement class and we also need to bring in the required namespace next we need to register this custom authorization handler class so for that on the services object which is of type i service collection we are using add singleton method we could also use add transient or add scoped service registration methods we discussed these methods in detail in our previous videos in the series all that is left to do is use this custom policy and protect our controller actions we want to use this policy to protect manage user roles action within the administration controller at the moment we are using it on the edit role action we no longer need it here let's also remove it from the post version of the edit role action and then use it on manage user roles action Let's also apply it on the post version of manage user roles and then run our project. At the moment, I'm logged in with this username, prajim at prajimtech.com. Now let's navigate to list users page and then edit one of the other admin users. Let's edit this test user and notice when I click manage roles, I'm allowed access to this action because the admin ID that is being edited here is different from this logged in admin ID. Notice I can make a change, click update and everything works as expected. Now let's go back to the list users page and then try to edit my own record. Notice when I click manage roles button. We are automatically redirected to the access denied view because the admin user ID that is being edited and the logged in admin ID are the same. So the access is denied. Now let's go back to the list users page and then edit this user again. And keep in mind at the moment, we are only protecting the manage user roles action. We are not protecting manage user claims action. So now when I click manage claims, I am allowed access because we are not protecting it yet. To protect manage user claims, we can use the same custom policy. At the moment, to handle our custom requirement, we have 
just one custom handler. And for this custom handler to validate the requirement successfully, the logged in user must be in the admin role. He must have editorial claim type with a claim value of true and the logged in admin ID must not be equal to the admin ID being edited. So at the moment for this requirement, we have only one handler. It's also possible a given requirement can have multiple handlers. We'll discuss a use case for that in our next video. Let's quickly recap the steps required for creating custom requirements and handlers. First, create the custom requirement. For that, we create a class that implements the built-in I authorization requirement interface. Next, create the custom handler. For that, we create a class that inherits from authorization handler of T, where T is the requirement that we want to handle. In our case, it is manage admin roles and claims requirement. And then we need to provide implementation for handle requirement async method. Next, we need to register the custom handler. We do this in the configure services method of the startup class. And then finally use the custom policy. That's it in this video. Thank you for listening.